signatures thanks to people like you. We set a record for a signature collection one at a time. Uh, didn't win that one, but you know you don't win them all, that's okay. Uh, John has been on the radio about a month longer than I've been on uh, KBI. Uh, he stayed with KBI when I got separated by management because I talked about guns too much. And he has been your afternoon voice and now your morning voice for a very long time on KBI in Seattle. Please join me in welcoming my good friend, your good friend, and birthday boy tomorrow, John Carlson. <laughs> That's right, Curry. The big, the big four or five tomorrow. <laughs> hey, here's another way of knowing how long Curry and I have known each other. We met in Young Republicans. <laughs> so, true. I, I headed the UW chapter, and he was the state, uh, the state leader of Young Republicans back then. Uh, first of all, big thank you to everybody for being here, and a huge. Uh, Congratulations to Johnny Walker and what a great team putting together. A I think it will be the first of many. The first of many. Uh, it was great to see Tony Stevens from Kitsap County Republicans. I spoke at the Lincoln Day dinner at Kitsap. There's a county that's on the move. There's a county that's showing the right way to go. Anyway, there are two things that have drawn all of us here together. One of those things is not that unusual in this country, and that is that we are conservatives. There's a lot of conservatives throughout the country. There's more conservatives than liberals, which is why this is still a great country. <laughs> but one of the two things that brings us here is conservative. It's the second thing that I want to talk to you about today that explains why we are all here. And that is, we're conservatives and we decided to do something about it. And there aren't a whole lot of people who do that. A very few people drive the conservative movement in America. And believe me, it's not about money. Not about money at all. It's about people, and it's about the power and the force of ideas. But what I want everyone here to do this morning is to think about that moment when you decided you wanted to do something about conservatism, when you wanted to push the ball forward, what did it take? Now, for some people, their conservatism, you know, started gradually and eventually they migrate over time. You know, the old stereotype that everyone starts out liberal and then as the mortgage comes and as the kids come and as the community, you more community minded, you gradually become more conservative over time. Uh, and some people, their conservatism hit them in a moment. It, there was an issue. There was something that made them conservative. But what was it that made you realize that you wanted to stand up and actually do something about conservatism. For some people, it was seeing a movie. For some people, it was a book. Other people heard a great speaker in person or maybe on the radio. <laughs> or TV. For other people, it was a role model. Maybe it was a teacher or a coach. Oftentimes it was a parent or a friend or somebody that inspired you. For me, it was an incident. 
an incident in high school that had nothing to do with me. But that's the moment when I realized that not only was I conservative, but I wanted to do something about it. It happened in high school. It was the fall of my senior year, and I was on the student newspaper, of course, and I had always, I had been liberal, I still know the words to every Bob Dylan song before 1977, uh, and then had kind of migrated back over to the conservative side, but it was kind of unsettling. And I mean, I wasn't sure why, I just kind of was being pulled in that direction. And then something happened. We had a girls club at West Seattle High School very popular girls club. And the girls club received notice that they had to start admitting boys. And they had to change their name to something non-sexist. And I said, that's weird. Why do they have to do that? Again, I'm 17 at the time. That doesn't make much sense. They said, well, there's this entity called Title IX, which I had thought only applied to sports, but Title IX mandates that there has to be equality and opportunity between boys and girls. And uh, boys can't join this club. I said, well, there's a boys club. I mean, no one ever goes to the meetings. <laughs> and come to think of it, it went out of business. But there's ample opportunity if guys want to start a club. So what's the problem? And then, well, the problem is that all these groups have to be have to be uh, integrated. I said, well, again, that makes no sense. We have a boys basketball team and a girls basketball team. So why can't we have a boys club and a girls club? They said, well. Social activities need to be integrated. I said, by the way, who's the person who decides that it has to happen? I mean, is this Principal Hall? So I went to talk to Principal Hall. I said, Mr. Hall, how come the girls' club has to admit boys? Now, understand, most people, even if they <coughs> agreed with me, probably would have asked the question, shrugged their shoulders, and just gone off. But I needed to get this answer. It was starting to bug me. And so, oh, Mr. Hall said, oh, that's a mandate. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, we just got a memo from school district that we have to comply with this. So, of course, being the enterprising young <laughs> reporter for the student newspaper, I called the school district. I said, why are you doing this? And they said, well, and I got the same old script. There have to be equal opportunity for boys and girls, da, 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 da. And I said, well, OK, we had the Warriors Club for boys. Nobody went to the beans. They went out of, of uh, business. But the girls club is thriving. I mean, it's popular. There dozens of girls go to the meetings, and they, they go to the Mount St. Vincent Center to entertain and, and uh, be there for the seniors, and they have drives you know, for charity and everything. It's a thriving club. Why would you want to change it? Why would you want to wreck it? And they said, well, uh, it's a mandate. I said, mandate from who? He said, well, this is from Washington, D.C. I said, Washington, D.C.? Who in Washington, D.C. knows more about West Seattle High School than the school district or the school? And it, well, it's a federal mandate. Blah, 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 blah. So I end up writing this up and, uh, and talking about the enforcement of Title IX was no longer beginning to make sense when it did things like this and pointed out that it perfectly popular girls club was being changed, altered, not for the good, simply because of mandates from someone who doesn't even know West Seattle High School existed, 
let alone uh, know, knew anything about the club or the organization or the people. And it, it won a prize from, of all groups, the Washington Women's Press Association. <laughs> and, and that, by the way, that was the start. You're saying, you know, what was the start of John Carlson, conservative media figure? That, that was the moment. But I took some lessons away from this little episode. And the first lesson was 90% of the people I talked to agreed with me. Not just students, but teachers. My journalism advisor agreed with me. The vice principal agreed with me. Principal Hall agreed with me. Everyone agreed with me. Um, the people of the school district were very sympathetic. But no one wanted to really do anything about it. They were just kind of accepting that this is what we had to do, even though they knew it wasn't going to benefit the club or organization. The second thing uh, that I noticed about this is that the article hit, it made kind of a splash. And a lot of the other students said, yeah, man, that's real blankety blank that they're doing this. You know, that's and even the girls in the club said, yeah, you know, thanks for speaking up for us. Uh, I wish we didn't have to do that. But then they just kind of went with it. They just kind of rolled with it. And I said, you know, I'm different from all these people. Okay? I'm not the same way. I mean, they and I agree, but I want to complain about it. I want to do something about it. I don't just want to turn and shrug my shoulders and make do. You know what? That's what every person in this room has in common. <coughs> Some people, when the Obama administration began, and there was this massive stimulus, and there was this end of the Bush era bailouts, and they just kind of said, well, you know, all right, uh, I guess that's where we're going now. I'm not really crazy about it. But then there was a young gal named Kelly Carender uh, who said, you know, this is nonsense. I'm going to do something about this. She ends up holding a rally in, of all places, Westlake Center, Seattle, which becomes the birthplace of the Tea Party movement. I absolutely love the fact that three strikes you're out for criminals, the health care rally that ran Hillary Care out of business, run by Kirby Wilbur, and the Tea Party movement all happened in the city of Seattle. <laughs> but for some of you, you know, maybe it was you you heard about you know, uh, a restriction on firearm freedom, on Second Amendment rights. Maybe you got to notice a massive increase in property tax. Maybe it was, you know, notice of this ridiculous government boondoggle or an absolutely outrageous new curriculum in the schools or, you know, notice that illegal immigrants were being allowed sanctuary even if they committed crimes in your community. And you decide, you know what, we're going to stand up and push back on all that. That is what, there's a guy in the back there furious when he had, saw his license tabs out of control. He said, someone ought to do something. Maybe it should be me. Thus, $30 license tab. So, my point here is that it's a very few people 
who really make the difference. But they do make the difference. That is what makes everyone here unique. That is what makes the Olympic Conference so important. And that is why I wanted to be here today to say thank you and press forward. You are on the right side. Yeah. Thank you very much. So there usually are not questions uh, after what's being called the TED Talk, which is what I just gave. There's going to be a panel on, of all things, Kirby's still talking about guns, uh, about the Second Amendment. Um, we're going to take a short break, so we can. Short five, ten minute break before the panel on guns. John will stick around to ask your questions if you have any. And, um, his birthday is tomorrow.